Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cryptic TMG back with a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about Le Mans Ultimate and the recent update that just dropped. Um, I did also watch a podcast on Traction GG that had the one of the CEOs of Le Mans Ultimate. He was talking about what's going to be coming to the game. I want to focus on some of those points and also things that I think they need to be prioritizing to actually take this game to the next level. If you guys didn't know there was an update that pretty much changed, you know, the, the tire physics a little bit certain things were a little bit different um sort of things that i've had a couple of gripes with that i wanted to change maybe for the future and for me that didn't make the game feel as good but we ended up seeing in some areas it has improved some things in other areas it's kind of been a downer for me personally someone who's still on a t300 a old wheel some other people like print art he's really getting on with it and absolutely flying on the game so we're gonna get stuck into all those things so let's go So if you haven't been on Le Mans Ultimate in a while, um, if you jump on, you'll see there's a brand new update. They brought out the BMW Hypercar, which um, I tested and it felt pretty good. And that's the first thing I want to lead with. Um, they did change some of the things to do with the, the tires. I believe they made the tires, I think, a little bit harder or something like that. The, the lap times have slowed down considerably, probably about two or so seconds slower than what they were before. And it's pretty weird, especially on my wheel, because the game generally the lmp2s felt amazing on this game felt so so good to me on this game before the patch right after the patch it's, it just feels like pure understeer like just crazy amounts of understeer especially when you're doing um you know no no setup races where the setups are just fixed and literally i cannot get the lmp2 to turn um I tried loads of different wheel settings. I even went into the game files to try and see if I can tweak the wheel because I want to change the coefficient and the saturation um, in my wheelbase to make it feel a little bit more intuitive like I had it before previously on the other patches. But whatever they change, it just seems like something inherently is just different in the force feedback. The car feels very, very understeery. And, you know, you, you tend to now have to run your brake bias a lot more rearwards feels a little bit easier to lock up as well um so it's, it's almost like if you try and break and turn just a little bit it's, it's way more easier to lock up so you you generally have to run your brake bias further back than before um and in, in that sense i'm definitely not enjoying the game as much as i was before that was until i tried the hypercars now previously i completely stayed away from the hypercars because to me they just didn't feel very nice it just felt sort of just weird you know it wasn't a pleasant experience but now the hyper cars feel amazing but the lmp2 cars kind of felt like they've dropped off a cliff now i don't know if it's the same for everybody like for, for instance printer he's really loving lmp2 cars he's absolutely flying in those things but for me my other friend carl and we we did quite a lot of ranked races and stuff before and the lmp2s were definitely our favorites now it's like eh, I, d I don't even want to drive them anymore <laughs> do you know what i mean so it's it's kind of weird how they've it's kind of flipped but what i will say is this game i feel like the selling point for this game should probably be the hypercars you know because we've got gt3 covered with acc you know um gtes there there's not that many of them and the bop is kind of all over the place so it just doesn't hold the same interest. I know GT3s are coming later on in 2024. That will be interesting when they do get implemented into the game. But for the most part, gt 3 is on iRacing, it's on ACC, so it feels like it's covered. Now, the hypercars is what should realistically be the standout class for this game. So I have no qualms with the hypercars, you know, getting a lot of attention because I feel like it's kind of brought the hypercars to life. Now, I, when I jump on um, LMU, I want to drive the hypercars now. So um, it's kind of weighing up the good and the bad. I haven't managed to make the force feedback feel as nice as what I had it before. It's kind of been a little bit of a struggle. Trust me, guys, if you watched my stream the other day, I was in the game file, I was trying to change everything, trying to make the, the, the steering wheel feel nice. But what I will say is in the, in the um, hypercars, it feels, feels pretty good, you know? It's only the LMP2s. I didn't do too much GTE driving, so I don't know if they feel really understeery, but whatever they've done to the tires, the LMP2s just feel 
just, I don't know, man. I don't know what's happened. To me, personally, before, they were the best cars to drive on the game. Now, I would argue that the hyper cars are feel nicer to drive, you know? Um, not sure if that was what they were aiming for, but that's, to me, that's what's happened. Um, also, I did watch a podcast. I think it was Traction GG. They had a podcast with, like, the CEO of... of um, of this game and he was talking about a lot of things that are coming i think we're getting imola next month i believe we're getting into lagos and then gt freeze later on in 2024 now i think there's been a little bit of a hoopla apparently i don't know if this is true but apparently they're gonna try and move to sort of an i racing scheme where you have to sort of pay to go online and do all this you know subscription based things to me personally I think that's going to be an L. If they do that, I think it's going to be an L because iRacing already, you know, is already an established, you know, sim where people know what they're getting themselves into. I feel like these guys are still trying to find their way thinking what they should do. And they don't have the numbers to all of a sudden make people pay to go online. It's, there's not a lot of people online in the first place anyway. So then to make it a... You know like a money grab i feel like it's going to be an l and i feel like personally if that was that the avenue they went down i think this game will start taking a nose dive nose dive even though it has good fundamentals that can be built on um it's gonna it's gonna take a nose dive now what i will say also as well if they really wanted to take this game to the next level trust me guys when i say this they need to make online lobbies the only way you can race online right now is doing ranked races, which is cool, but you need to have online lobbies because at the end of the day, to build a community, you have to let the community flourish. The community can't flourish if they can only, literally only do ranked races. What about if you want to race with your friends that's just jumped on the game, you know? You can't really do it because the chances are if you've been on the game previously, you're already ranked up. Your friends are right at the beginning trying to rank up. So you, you can never re realistically meet them in the lobby. You can't do things like that. Um, and that's that's kind of where it's pretty hard to sort of build that community. Now, if you look at ACC, for example, ACC's community is probably like no other in the sense where all these different places like LFM and AOR, these guys work together. You know, they make sure whenever they've got a big race on, these things are most of the time not even done on the same day because they know okay let's leave let's leave uh, Thursday open for the pro series on Monday we'll leave that open because it's the AOR tier one you know they, they kind of work around each other they work together to build a better BOP for the game and I feel like that's why ACC is in terms of community it might not have the numbers of some of the other games but the community is strong because it feels like it works together to make the game better and you know to be honest it's helped now even the Traction GGG podcast or Traction GG podcast that I watched with the CEO, this guy knows about LFM. He knows about, you know, all those things that's helped ACC's growth and helped the, the player base on ACC. He knows about all of these things. So I would think it would make sense if they were to, you know, try and try and adopt a similar strategy because I don't mind paying, paying for DLC even though the game's still in the better stage. I don't mind paying for DLC if it's a, a big improvement to the game and it's going to give us content that we don't already, already have i'll take it i don't mind but if you move to a subscription base and the game's not even finished bro to me that's it kind of shouts as a money grab and i feel like the trajectory of the game is going to go downwards for me personally build your community before you even think about any sort of subscription base you need to build a solid community we need to have, you know, people that are ride or die because at the moment, to me, there's not enough people in the game because I can jump on and do a ranked race and I'm pretty much seeing the same names in every race, you know? It's not like I'm seeing people I've never seen before. Most of the time, if I watch someone stream or anything like that, I've seen the majority of the people in those races. So the community still has a way to go in terms of growth. Um, but we shall see what the future holds, man. I feel like there is positives definitely i do believe when the gt3s get added that will add a, a, a bigger sort of audience to the game a lot of people love gt3 racing 
for me personally, I do believe the focus should probably be on the hypercars because it is the massive selling point of this game. So we shall see. Tell me what you guys think about the update as well. Um, I've seen a lot of people saying that it feels kind of weird. I've watched a few streams, been in the comment section, just, you know, talking to people that actually play the game, that have an invested interest because I am still a majority of ACC player, but I do like to jump on the Mons Ultimate and just feel how the game feels, feel the progression and stuff like that. And for me personally, um, for the lmp 2s a backward step, for the hypercars, a forward step. So I'm not sure if that's good or bad. Um, I'm not sure how everybody feels about it. So far, it's been pretty mixed, man. It's definitely been pretty mixed. Um, has anyone sort of come up with other things you could change in the force feedback or any anything else to make the game feel a little bit better? I, for one, have definitely been trying. Um, to me, the, the biggest issue is this understeer, bro. It's like, you can't even get rid of it. It's just, I don't know. It makes the LMP2 cars feel like a submarine. You can, can't turn the car. When I go around Spa and I go through No Name, bro, the car, I'm literally having to go down to second gear just to get the, the car to turn in. I'm still understeering, so it's been pretty tricky, man. It's been pretty tricky. I will say this, the skill level for Le Mans Ultimate is pretty high, man. It's not easy to be fast on that game at all. It's not easy to be fast. Um, apparently they introduced some sort of slip angle or something like that. I, I don't know, man. For me, it didn't feel as, uh, it didn't feel as natural to drive for me, just jumping on, getting into the LMP2s. It didn't just feel natural the way how it used to feel. Um, I always knew with this game, my force feedback, I have to get it perfect for me to actually enjoy how the game should feel. And I managed to do it twice. When the game first came out, I did it. Then they had another update. And then I managed to go into the game files and I did it again. Um, and then this time for the NMP2s, it felt awful. So I tried, I still haven't found the right balance for the LMP2s, but what's kind of annoying is I've made the, the hypercast feel great to me, but it's sort of like, am I going to have to change settings every time I get on the game, depending on what car I want to jump into? And that's why I feel like the game needs the online lobbies, because when you're doing ranked races, the races are always changing, you know, it's always, you know, every hour or every 45 minutes or, or whatever it is, it does need a online sort of system where you can just go into an online lobby and do whatever track you want, you know, do as many laps as you want, have practice sessions and stuff like that. To me, the game needs that. Every game needs that. Um, if you're if you're doing sim racing, you need to be able to set up lobbies like freely. Um, but we shall see, guys. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. Cryptic TNG, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. And peace.